Well, that didn't go according to plan. For some reason, I have a reputation of um, smoke, sparks, and fire. So, let's continue with it with uh, this Archroid Plasma CNC machine. Now, I originally backed this machine on um, oh, about a year ago. And I'm just getting to unboxing it. And this was actually a very successful campaign. And um, this is how it should be um, ran. Updates were sent out at least once a month. And all the backers knew what was happening. And I always wanted to get into CNC Plasma. And um, I had to wait almost a year for all the electrical in my garage to be upgraded. I got this uh, at the end of March of last year. So, yes, I am just getting to unboxing it now. So let's go ahead and um, make some space to uh, put this uh, CNC plasma to use. Well, now I need something for this archroid to sit on. This being the metal fabrication area. There was a welder over here, right there on the floor. Uh, you got the plasma cutter, the prime weld, cut 60 right behind there, the air compressor, and a few fiber lasers. So I want to make sure that I have enough surface area, and this is uh, a workbench. My brother gave me for Christmas and this is where the Arctroid is going to sit on. Now I know that I should have a water table for it but uh, I got to make sure I had the right dimensions and that's going to need to be mobile as well. Just be sure I could tuck it out of the way. And finally getting to it. It's only been about nine ten months since I've had this so let's go ahead and actually open up the box and see what's inside. It's been so hard to just sit there and wait to get this out of the box. And what we have here, this is your calibration triangle. And uh, since the Arctroid is on the swing arm, this is how we calibrate it. And in this next uh, bag, as soon as I can grab it, we have the power cable, we have a Cat6 cable, and we have what's called a sled slide switch. That's going to be used on the calibration triangle. And in the next bag, uh, we got some swag, um, just a, like, a couple stickers and a um, cautionary um, sheet because there was no manual with this on the early Kickstarter. I sure hope they included manuals on the future releases. So if you don't know CAD or anything, this has a pretty unique feature. This has a feature called Simple Trace. You just use the stylus and actually trace what you want to cut. Pretty unique. Never seen anything like it. That's actually what kind of intrigued me with it. And this is your plasma torch mount. So basically you just swap these around. Um, if you want to trace, then swap it to the torch and cut. And um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be lifting this out on camera. Sorry. Here we have a uh, seven inch touchscreen display. Kickstand in the back here. And then we have a rotary knob that's also clicks down for like entering. Standard power switch on the back with the uh, power. And then we have a torch auxiliary one and two. This way your uh, CNC can actually operate your plasma. We have a standard CAT6. This is for to plug into your display. It provides power as well as operation. So if you need an extension, pretty easy to find one. Then along here we have our torch mount. Um, oh, look at this. A little bit of an editing mistake. Let's take that off now. That foam. Yep, there we go. Now let's get back to business. Here's our stylus mount. And all it does is uh, to get it on here is that you move these little hinges here and it just friction fits on there. So go ahead and pull it, snap it in, and make sure it's nice and snug down. That's it. All in there. Some of them may go further. Um, these are as far down as mine will go. So don't want to put too much pressure on it. But nice and snug. That's all you need to do. I actually took off those little end pieces because they kept on falling off. Now we can go ahead and mount our torch because we're going to need it for our calibration. Here we have our calibration triangle. We're going to just go ahead and screw these in to all three corners. Simply is really easy. Just line up the three corners. And then once we have those lined in, just go ahead and take a wrench and snug them into place. I would suggest before we even turn on the machine, we check to make sure that we have a updated uh, firmware. It's uh, always best to 
run the latest firmware on anything that's electronic that can be actually upgraded. You'll see everything's available right here. Simple Trace, and then you got the firmware, Fusion, Sheet Cam, and you definitely want to make sure that you're using a FAT32 format and less than 32 gigs. Um, you also have the operation manual right here. Let's go ahead and go into it because it, mine didn't have it. So actually I had to refer to this for operation use here. Um, and I would think that they're actually updating it as the software slash firmware also gets upgraded. It walks you right through here through all the um, calibrations, everything needed. And look, this is actually running a fork of Marlin. So if you're into 3D printers, you may have seen this before because Marlin is very, very popular on 3D printers. So let's go ahead and flash this and see what the display looks like. I'll provide a link on how you could go ahead and um, run the installation to update the firmware. Oh, did I tell you? No, you got to buy your own couple dollar memory stick. You spend over two grand for a CNC machine. You would think that they would provide one. What the crap is this BS? Anyways, I'll provide that uh, link in the description on how to uh, get that installed. So let's go ahead and calibrate it. You got two notches here. You put the triangle there. And I would suggest that you actually like mount yours to the table. Because I didn't. Click on the gear and click on uh, calibrate. And it actually walks you through the whole process. Very nicely done. So you're going to click on next. And now we're going to put our little slider in there. And um, you're going to use your stylus to calibrate it for the first uh, set of instructions here. So let's go ahead and mount that here. This is what your little um, sled clicky you know, thing is. So basically you have a, just a little switch in here and it just slides across these rails. And that's how we're going to calibrate it. Of course, we're going to now move our, attach our stylus and make sure it's plugged in. And we're going to line it up. You can use the jog wheel to move your Z up and down to make sure it's against it. And the first step will be to slide it along the axis. Now you may have to hold them both in place, the stylus and that sled, because it may fall off. <laughs> so far I'm in good shape here for these two and um, yep, made it, no problem. Now the next one I actually had to hold the sled and the stylus because it just wasn't having it <laughs> at all. So let's go ahead and give this a push and I found that this needed a little bit of lubrication, very tight on here. So, and but yet I was still able to calibrate it, see it moved. So you definitely want to make sure you have it clamped down. And per the on-screen instructions, we got to switch our uh, stylus to our torch. Go ahead and put the torch on and rinse and repeat. We're gonna just do the same steps. We're gonna slide the torch over and use the jog knob to bring your Z down. And what's nice about it is that uh, the torch nozzle is going to go right on top of it. And you're going to just do the same three steps. And then calibration will be complete. And you'll be uh, up and ready to CNC plasma cut in no time. Pretty unique. But before we begin cutting, let's talk about today's video sponsor. And today's video sponsor is PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB? Well, look no further than PCB Way. They're their one-stop shop for your PCB and manufacturing needs. You want to just generate a quote? It's pretty simple. Then you could do a standard PCB, advanced PCB. You could do a FTC rigid flex PCB. You could do some assembly. And you could also do SMD stenciling. But that's not it. They also offer CNC and also 3D printing. <laughs> it's literally a one-stop shop for all your needs looking for a little project to do look at the shared projects and you could go ahead and basically order a whole kit and just do a little project that someone else has created it's a great community section for to share your ideas and have other people build the projects that you are working on and i would like to thank pcb way for sponsoring this video now let's continue on to the archroid cnc plasma cutter First things first, make sure that uh, your uh, Arctroid is nice and secure to your surface. Move the arm out a little bit and hit home. You're going to do this every time before you begin. This way it, the machine knows where it's at. The tip is anyways. Now I just want to uh, test this 
I have uh, the plasma cutter turned off. That way, no accidents happen here. I just want to show you how it probes the material. Now, my uh, plasma torch will operate the cutting height at 1.6 millimeters. Now, this could be stored in one of two places in the G code that uh, you created your file on, like Fusion 360, or you can have it stored in the machine firmware of your torch height. Now, my uh, Prime Wheel Cut 60 is CNC compatible. So, I'm going to take this little adapter here and I'm going to solder it. I'm going to check the pin layout here, and um, it looks like I'm going to need to use one and two. Since basically this is just a switch, I'm going to go ahead and solder the two pins on there, and um, that'll be it. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in, and I'm going to attach it to the torch on the back of the machine. Can't get any more simple than that. Now I decide to load a file that I created in Inkscape, and let's see how well this works for me. I have just a sheet of like 22 gauge sheet metal here. It's just regular steel. And I figure we could go ahead and give it a test run. Now I do not have a water table. And please make sure that all your furry friends or anyone else that's not wearing appropriate protection is out of your work area. And I already noticed the problem here. Hmm. <laughs> it's not cutting very well at all. Um, it starts to cut and then you'll notice it dies off. That is really odd. Maybe I could get a couple hundred thousand like for a straw painting or something. However, there's something missing. I wonder what that might be. Did I miss something? Yep. Classic rookie move. No ground clamp. Ugh. So, we're going to load up the file again, and we're going to try it again. I have a, a thicker sheet of 16 gauge, and I'm just kind of doing an outline to see that everything fits on here. And we'll begin cutting with a ground clamp. And it's on its final cut. And since I don't have a water table, I can't really fix this small piece all that well. And I think I'm also running a little bit too slow. That's causing all this warping. And right now it's doing its final cut, which is around the perimeter of the sign. Very nice and clean. And, of course, I had to ground clamp on. Uh, that didn't work out too well. <laughs> well, some learning here. My uh, connecting pieces are too small. And it looks like I'm running a little bit too slow. Yeah, I was at about 1600 millimeters per second. I should have been at about um, 2800 millimeters per second. Then I decided to step up my game here. Instead of just doing an Inkscape file, DXF, I um, decided to go all, all in. Did a Fusion 360 with Machine Path as well. This way I have control of the paths, where the tool enters, through the letters and everything. And the final cut. Now I went to Home Depot, bought this lovely sheet of 16 gauge. It's a 12 by 18 inch, and it was about $23. Now I really need to find a good source of uh, steel in Illinois. That way I don't have to spend that type of money at Home Depot. But with that and the parameters set on here, I believe we are good to go. So let's go ahead and kick this off and see how it looks at the end.
Now, I have to say, taking it easy, slower, and making sure you have everything done, the results kind of speak for themselves. A lot cleaner, everything came out a lot nicer, and I'm pretty impressed. Now I need to get a grinding wheel to the back of here to knock off all the slag, but otherwise, I'm very happy with the results of this. Now, I have to say, you're definitely gonna want like a water table for this. I mean, you're doing like one or two cuts here and there, it's not that bad, but this, this gets everywhere. Particulates were everywhere. You wanna wear a mask or respirator as well. It's just messy. It's a very messy job. <laughs> so, um, I did come across one issue. You hear the Z make that weird noise. And I reached out to customer support. They said, just turn down the acceleration on the Z to 30. And that actually did resolve the issue. Now this does have torch control height. I did reach out to them. I have an unlock code. Let me know if uh, you want me to do that in another video or not. It does also have a uh, simple trace where you could go ahead and trace objects. And let me know if you're interested in that as well, because I will definitely do another video if you so choose. I think this is a great addition to my workshop and I'm happy that the campaign worked. They are selling these. I'm, I'll drop the link in the description below. I'm not affiliated with them by any means. This is just me expanding the capabilities of my garage. So I really appreciate you tuning into Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you the next time on Tripod's Garage.